don't need to believe anything that I say here today. I'll say that again. You don't need to believe anything that I say here today. You can't believe the bits before I did work for NAM and things like that. That, that bit's true. What I do ask is that you don't disbelieve it. I do ask that you don't disbelieve it. Now, is that contradictory? Well, no, because between not believing and disbelieving, there's a gap, a very important gap. And I ask you now to step into that gap with curiosity. Be curious about what I'm saying and ask yourself, is it possible that something that John is saying, in fact, is it true, is it of value to me? Remain curious for the rest of this hour. Try to remain curious for the rest of the day and even for five days, because it's amazing when people have remained curious even after they've left. I have had phone calls and they said, I get it. I get what you said. I thought it was crazy, I get what you said. So if you have nothing else to do for the next five days, be curious, okay? Now for thousands of years, men and women across the, the, the world knew that high quality information was invaluable to them. Information about their products, about their markets, their customers, their competition. Information was their most valuable asset because without information, they couldn't capitalize on any of the other assets. Information. It was information about exotic products, trade routes, markets, drove world trade, whether it was Marco Polo going to the east or Columbus and Cortez going to the new world. Information drove it. The DNA of data. The double helix structure of the DNA epitomizes the core information structure of every enterprise. It shows the two key elements of information architecture, which are the business functions and the data entities and how they're inextricably linked. You can't have one without the other. For the first time in history, and you should remember this, it really is significant. For the first time in history, information was removed from the heart of the enterprise. It had always been there, it went off and became data. The DNA of the enterprise was split, IT came in, digital saw, down the middle, and the two strands were separated and taken to opposite parts of the business never to be joined again. Maybe after this they will be, okay? Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get some people fighting a crusade. Well, they have been past the poison chalice. Now I know in the early days, some IT managers, I met them in, in uh, organizations in the UK uh, at that time, they went, wow because they started off really as the finance manager. Finance was usually the first place to become computerized because there were obviously it benefits. Then the finance manager saw that he was not just in charge of finance, he now had computing. And this gave him immense power and he thought, wow, it was a poison chalice. Uh, if you didn't think it was a poison chalice, maybe just think it's an impossible task. Because it is like pushing a boulder uphill. What's the Sisyphus, was near the chap who was condemned to push a rock uphill every day and every sunset and roll to the bottom. How many people from IT might feel like that? Yeah? So what is master data management? Well, before we can answer that, we need to answer the question, what are mass, what is, what are master data? What is master data? Or what are master data entities? And let's start with some basic definitions. Now I find this useful because I had to remind myself of these from time to time when I get in conversations. In any organization, data can be put into four categories. The first of these, transactional data, things like um, a sale, a purchase, a delivery. These are the uh, elements that are created by the business doing its day-to-day -day activities. 
The next one are domain data. Uh, these could be simple domains. These are used to classify data, to classify, for example, the transactional data. They could be simple domains, binary domains like yes, no, male, female, or they could be more complete, like a valid set of states, a valid set of countries, a valid set of colors. The next is metadata, and metadata is data that describes the function the structure and format of data. For example, we have metadata here, which is telling us uh, the structure and format of a data table. Uh, metadata should not be misused, as the media do it, when they're talking about the metadata that government is catch um, capturing, say, about telephone calls. That's not metadata, that's data. And finally, we have master data. So what are master data entities? Well, these are actually those entities which, when joined through a commercial transaction, generate revenue or create value for the enterprise. So that is what a master entity is. So, where do you find your master data entities? Well, the one place you don't look is in your existing data. Why not? For the same reason that you wouldn't look in a scrapyard for the parts for a Formula One racing car. It's not a good place. So what are the six multi-dimensional MDM questions? Well, question one is, what do we make, buy, sell, or trade? Is it oil and gas? Is it uh, cars? Are we selling those to the domestic market, the commercial market? Are we selling property? And again, is that domestic or commercial property? Is it medical resources? Are we doing it to institutions or to individuals? If we're selling food, are we doing it wholesale or retail? Such a difference as to what our master data will, uh, data will be based on that.